really takes time to get used to a car and to understand its nuances and the, the things that really make you appreciate why it's different than any other car. I've owned this one for a year now, and it's finally time to show you what it's like owning a Cadillac CTS-V Coupe. I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. Girl, you just don't realize what you do to me when you hold me in your arms so tight you let me know everything's all right One of the most distinctive things about this car is its American muscle wrapped in a luxury vehicle. The base vehicle, a Cadillac CTS, is pretty similar, except for what's under the hood. Yeah. Many of the long-term followers of this channel know I am not a fan of LS swaps and RX-7s. Appreciate it, respect it, not my thing. So it comes to me as slightly ironic that I end up purchasing a vehicle that has that very motor in it. The beast that is powering this car is a 6.2 liter supercharged LS V8. It is the same motor that is used in the ZL1 Camaro and it's based off of a Corvette engine. So it's similar, very similar, but not the same. Why would I be a trader and sell out to the rotary engine world? Well, first of all, it's not that. This is a motor that came stock with this vehicle. It'd be like me putting a 2JZ in this. It just isn't what it's meant to have. And I, I'm a bit of a purist that way. So, why do I love this motor in this car? It sounds amazing. If you're like me, you're a fan of boost. Now, I, I have the Lamborghini, which is a naturally aspirated motor. Love it. But the, what makes me excited, what gets me going, is that boost gauge, and this car has it. It's a slightly different style of boost though. This is a supercharger where all of my other cars are turbocharged. There are a couple of things I truly don't care for about this car that you wouldn't notice until you've owned it for a little while. One is they have the steering wheel wrapped in Alcantara, and they have the shift knob wrapped in Alcantara, and both of them wear very poorly. That is, it's not something that I would have chose to put on the steering wheel, uh, this car has currently 40,000 miles, and it, it just w looks horrible. It, it wore it out too quick. One of the biggest improvements that I've seen in these Cadillacs from previous generations that I've owned is the traction control system and the Stabilitrack. Those are both on point. They work very well, and they keep this 550 horsepower from the factory under control quite well. The problem is they almost do it too well, so you'll catch me often holding down the traction control disabling button which for 10 seconds which disables both traction control and stability track for a more raw experience. Now if you've ever been interested in buying one of these cars 
you might be familiar with the fact that it has magnetic ride control. That was one of the biggest things that Cadillac was pushing when they first sold the vehicle to people. And it works very well. What it is, is they have this really thick, brown, blackish, like liquid metal that's inside of the struts that can be controlled by electricity to firm or loosen up the ride. I know that that's dark brown because I broke one of my struts open and it's exploded all over me. So I know it's also under a lot of pressure. The interesting thing is, is if you accidentally disconnect one of the struts from the system, the car goes into like a limp mode, will not let you go over 80 miles an hour. The other interesting thing about that is it also completely disables the adaptive uh, strut dampening. So you just have an old school Cadillac in a modern body just bouncing up and down the whole time. Biggest difference between this motor and most of my other cars, especially the boosted ones, is that the supercharger is instantaneous. The gearing might not be, but the supercharger is. So the moment you push gas and you need to go, you hear that whine and you see the boost building instantaneously. I purchased the version of the car that had Recaro seats. Why? Because why not? Those are the racing seats, those are the best version of the car. But that was actually an arbitrary point. That was uh, up for debate. 30%, almost 40% of these vehicles were sold with the standard CTS seats, which I, I think is kind of defeating the purpose, but if you're a larger person, you know, if you're packing on a couple extra pounds of love, these seats are not going to work for you. They, they hug you, they have bolsters, that inflate both on your hips, that ass, and your, your rib cage. And I guess the ass one is part of the hips. That's, I want it to be two separate areas, but it's the same area. Let me briskly come back up to the speed limit on this road. <laughs> so what you're gonna notice immediately is that I have a longer time waiting for the transmission to downshift because I'm in standard mode, I'm not in sport mode right now, than I do having time waiting for boost. Boost is there immediately, transmission trying to catch up. Really have three options for transmission shifting. One is the normal mode, which you know shifts sooner, tries to save gas, all of those sort of fun things. Number two is going over into sport mode, and it still manually, or excuse me, it still automatically shifts the transmission. You know, it, but it's gonna pick higher RPMs and it's gonna try and downshift sooner in anticipation of you driving a sports vehicle. But the third option is in sports mode, if you start pressing the paddles, which they're not really paddles, they're little tabs, you're gonna notice you're now in control of the transmission. The problem is you can't tell the transmission to upshift or downshift now in sports mode, in version two. You have to go back into normal mode, go back into sport mode, and now the transmission will start controlling itself again. So here's what it's like in sports mode under acceleration. Sport mode makes my titties jiggle. I'm not a huge fan of everything about this car. There are three major things that bother me. One, I got the vanilla light colored interior inserts. On my seat, it looks like I keep making bad mistakes on Taco Tuesdays. It looks disgusting. Two, the cup holders. I'm an American. I love my extra, extra, extra large, huge cups of things. There are two cup holders on here and I often have you know friends and family in the car and the two cups always hit into each other. It is actually inconvenient because your big gulp wants to spill out. You know, you can see the, the liquid bulging at the side of the lid wanting to pour out at any moment you hit a bump. If the second generation of CTSVs are on your list of cars to look at, I would strongly recommend it. This car is amazing. It's very comfortable. It's sleek, it's, it says something, it, you, you, it's unique in its design, but it's also that Cadillac feel. Now, it doesn't feel like my Lincoln, my 67 Lincoln or, or the 78 uh, Cadillac that I took on my $500 Craigslist drive, but for as, a modern, as much as a modern car can, this car feels like a Lincoln. I have to be honest with you, the first time I fell in love with the CTS series of the car was the Matrix. I was exactly that guy that Cadillac was hoping to snare in having a huge fight in the movie with people driving the Escalade and the CTS. I loved that car. I ended up owning an 05 CTS well, a couple years after the movies came out. But 
it wasn't until the V came out and it, this generation came out with a supercharged V that my heart, I was, I was gonna own one of these cars the moment it came out. I couldn't afford one of these cars the moment it came out, but I was gonna own one and here I am. Do I regret it? No, not at all. Does this car make a good daily driver? No, it does not make a good daily driver. What I thought would happen is that I would enjoy the fact that this thing's powerful. The problem is I enjoy it too much. And I constantly, with, with instant boost, with instant supercharged power, I want to nail it at every stoplight. I want to gun it. I want to go because it sounds amazing. It's just right there. Look at, I didn't even move and you just hear that supercharger. I love that. So that, I lucked out on the fact that whatever's going on with the gas crisis and people trying to put United States companies out of business with fracking or God knows what, we have lower gas prices and that's a temporary thing. So right now, that's a great thing for this car. I get 18 miles to the gallon on the highway uh, if you drive it reasonably and I rarely drive it reasonably. I'm always on the gas with this car. So I should maybe change my answer. Is this a great daily driver? Hell yeah. This is my third pet peeve about this car. Watch this. Man, I wanna get out of this car. No, I don't wanna get out of this car. Now I'm on a slight incline, I'm in my driveway, but the problem with this is that, you know, you either have to be Hercules and push the door wide open, or you're constantly like getting hit by the door as you're, as you're getting out of the car. What's the problem here? It's a coupe. It's a huge, heavy door. And I mean, we're talking about true first world problems, but that is my third pet peeve about this car.